This is Mark Bell from Supertraining.tv, Supertraining Gym, the strongest gym in the West, answering more questions today for the Power Project, brought to you by ThePowerMagazine.com and HowMuchYouBench.net. We got some questions to get to off the Facebooks today. One is from Mike Rasonis, who uh, came to a certification course run by myself and Jesse Burdick uh, out in Massachusetts. And Mike said he learned a lot at the seminar and appreciates uh, learning about the conjugate system. And he's employing it, he's utilizing it uh, with his clients and with his people and everybody's having a lot of success. But he has a question about barbells, different types of barbells. And I always say this, that it's an investment in strength. You can certainly get stronger uh, by just utilizing a regular barbell. You, you do not necessarily need bands. You do not necessarily need chains. You do not necessarily need uh, anything special or anything fancy to get stronger. However, a lot of these items make getting stronger easier. It can make it more efficient in a lot of ways. Uh, something like a safety squat bar is highly recommended. If you own a gym and you have, I've had people lift uh, in a sling. I've had people do squat sessions for weeks on end while their arm is in a sling. And they wouldn't be able to do that with a straight bar. You can only do that with a safety squat bar. Uh, there's also a cambered bar. These different barbells uh, cause different loading patterns. Um, it changes the volume. It changes the intensity of the workout in a lot of ways. When you utilize 400 pounds on one bar and 500 pounds on another bar, it has a much different response on your body. 500 pounds uh, with a certain barbell might be easier for you than 400 pounds on another type of bar. One thing to keep in mind with some of these different barbells is never get too far away from the actual straight bar itself because that'll cause a lot of problems. I've seen a lot of idiots over the years try to use the specialty bars um, uh, almost just by themselves and, and not use uh, not ever get back to the straight bar, not use the straight bar frequently enough and then go to the meet and just uh, just bomb, bomb out and not do well uh, because they're not used to the straight bar. The straight bar is going to show a lot of issues uh, that the other bars will not. Uh, but the, again, the other bars have tremendous value. And what I mean by that is the straight bar, when your arms are cocked back like this, it's not only mobility and strength through your upper body, or for, through your lower body, but it's mobility and strength through your upper body as well. And Jesse Burdick and myself see a lot of dysfunction when we go out and do these seminars. And uh, a lot of times we'll see somebody do a box squat and they'll have their hands out in front of them. Or you could simply grab a kettlebell, have it about waist high, mm -hmm. have it about here, and push it upward as you go to squat down. And you'll find that hardly anybody has dysfunction that way. But when they have a barbell on their back and they're trying to display their strength and mobility that way, uh, it causes a lot of issues. And there's a million, nine billion, gazillion reasons for it. Also, what we notice a lot of times is that th for the men, if they don't have some weight pushing them down, uh, they, can't dis they can't get into good positions either. So anyway, long story short here about the bars. These are an investment in strength. And I believe that if you're not getting them, that you're doing yourself a, disser a disservice. And I think that by having them, you're going to allow yourself and your clients to get stronger, faster, more efficiently. So why not look into them? They're really, in the grand scheme of things, they're not that expensive. I know mm -hmm. for some, three, four hundred bucks might sound like a lot of money, but these things last forever. That's a long time. They last forever. So. Uh, if I had to rate it and say, you know, which barbell to get first, um, we got a safety squat bar, which is a padded bar that goes like this and kind of pushes you forward, works the mid to upper back quite a bit. Um, and that bar is utilized for squats and for good mornings. Uh, also have a cambered bar. A cambered bar kind of has, is cambered and bent, bent. So like this here, and your hands are here rather than being up here. Uh, that bar takes a lot of stress off your shoulders and I would say kind of loads the weight into your lower back a little bit more uh, than some of the other barbells. It will also 
Uh, it also has a little bit of a swing to it, so it takes a little bit more stability to utilize that barbell. You also have to arch a little harder. You got to you got to kind of stick your chest up in the air uh, as you're popping up off the box, or if you're not going with the box out of the hole, you're going to have to kind of arch into it, kind of throw your head back into it. Uh, that barbell is fantastic. It's the best bar that they make uh, for good mornings. There's there's not a better barbell than that. Um, doing good mornings with a straight bar can be effective, but it's extremely difficult and extremely awkward because the barbell sometimes slides around uh, on your back, rolls around your back a little bit. Um, we also have a fat bar. A fat bar is what it sounds like. It's a bar that's very thick, could be utilized for cleans, uh, snatches, uh, any sort of grip work that you can think of, barbell curls, tricep work. You can do almost anything with it um, that you can think of. We, we uh, at Super Training, we do bench presses with it, and it helps kind of display the strength uh, or disperse the strength over a uh, larger portion of your arm, take some stress off your wrists and elbows. Um, let's see, what other barbells we got? I got uh, a bamboo bar. Many of you may not be familiar with a bamboo bar, a.k.a. an earthquake bar. Um, that is a bar that is made out of bamboo. Uh, and uh, it works to stabilize your muscles quite a bit, and it's mainly used for bench pressing. Um, how crucial is it to have that bar? Uh, if you're running into some shoulder issues, you may want to look into it. I have one because I believe uh, that you don't leave any stone unturned when it comes to trying to make yourself stronger. So at Super Training, we have everything and anything that you can think of uh, to make yourself better. Um, let's see, what else we got? Anyway, if you're looking into some of these bars, you're thinking about purchasing some of these bars, first place I'd stop is roguefitness.com. Um, they have a lot of different bands, a lot of different chains. They got the safety squat bar. They got the cambered bar. Uh, they also have some good multi-purpose barbells. Uh, they have a west side barbell bar. Um, and then in terms of looking for a bamboo bar, you can do a Google search for it. There's a website for it. You might be able to, I think you might still be able to order it off of westsidebarbell.com. Um, I think that pretty much does it for bars. But having different bars is going to allow you to load your body up differently uh, with different types of weights. Um, then we also have another question here. That pretty much concludes uh, stuff about barbells. We had another question about the Westside Barbell Conjugate System. A guy wants to know if she, he, he should go through different phases, accumulation, intensification, and uh, all that kind of stuff uh, while he's uh, doing the West Side Barbell Method. When you're doing the West Side Barbell Method, you kind of automatically go through some of those phases. Um, you're trying to hit PRs on your max effort work. You, you're trying to go heavy on your max effort days and on your dynamic days. Uh, you're doing a lot of speed work. You're doing a lot of volume. But your volume and your intensity is changing constantly. You're using different barbells quite a bit. Uh, you know, the squat cycles typically go in two or three week waves. Um, when you're doing those waves, some idiot talking on his fucking phone behind me. <laughs> Did I just cuss? Whoops. Whoops a daisy. Um, so you're going to go through a lot of those phases anyway. The whole point of the West Side Barbell Method is to basically be contest ready almost all the time. You're almost at full strength all the time. The one thing that I would say, the one thing that I've learned over the years, I've been doing this for a long time. And uh, if you're starting to embark on some of this stuff, you're starting to get into strength training and you're starting to do <clears throat> stuff like the West Side Method, uh, keep in mind that you're not always going to hit PRs it is unrealistic in my opinion to think that you're going to hit a PR every single time. So set realistic goals for yourself and change things up enough to where you can uh, where you can make PRs. You may not always get more weight but you might be able to get more reps or you might be able to do the lift a little better. You might be able to, be able to, to improve your technique. Any place you can get a small victory take it where you can because like I said, you're not always going to get a PR uh, unless you're doing the Dan Green method, which is just to load up more weight and, and make it every single time. But there's only one Dan Green, so uh, that may not work for everybody. Um, 
Something else to keep in mind, just when doing any of these programs, is to work your ass off. Don't don't get yourself uh, overly involved or overly confused with any one method. There's a lot of good methods out there. There's a lot of good ways of doing things. But what remains consistent, again, what remains consistent with the cream of the crop is to work hard. So make sure you're working hard. Make sure you're getting in enough exercise. It takes a certain amount of work to be good. It takes that much more to be great. Uh, so hopefully that, uh, that helps answer your question on the West Side Method. Uh, make sure that when you're doing your three-week waves that you start out week number uno with about 12 sets. Week number two, do about 10 sets. And week number three, do about eight sets. You could simply work up every third week and take something heavy uh, on your, it doesn't have to be a true max, but, uh, you know, go, go for something heavy on that third week. Um, on your max effort work, you know, take it as far as you can. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would try to get to like about a 9. It doesn't have to be a true max. It seems like in my, uh, my experience and, my, and with uh, Power Magazine and talking to some of the greats around the country, that the best of the best always leave a little. They don't miss weights. It's very rare for them to miss weights. And I know that uh, that's actually part of the max effort method is that sometimes you do miss weights. And that you don't worry about it too much. But in my experience and from talking to others, uh, starting to believe that maybe that's not necessarily the best idea. So uh, try to avoid missing weights. Uh, try, to do the, try to do the lift properly as you can. <laughs> it's when you're getting up to those, uh, those big, big weights, it's, uh, it's very tough to do. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. When I go around to some different gyms around the country, I have these coaches tell me, that uh, that they they uh, they're programming for strength, and all I can do is try not to laugh. And it's not because their lack of strength; it's because they're not training for strength enough. When I end up looking at their program or they describe it to me, it turns out that they're only doing a strength session once a week. So to uh, to put it into context that everybody can understand, how well would it work out if you only washed your butthole once a week? Think about that, and that is it from supertraining.tv. Later.